Hello, welcome to Writing Advice with That Coach Craig, who is me. And I'm here today to talk about some time-tested techniques that I have about kickstarting your writing. But first, a little bit about me, so you don't just think I'm another internet quack, you know, talking about stuff that I don't know about. I'm a longtime writer. I've written for places like The Washington Post, Entertainment Weekly, Spin, Vibe. Here's some of my Vibe cover stories um, right there. And I'm also an author. Um, my first book was a biography of Luther Vandross, who I interviewed a lot of times as a music critic. Actually, it's about to come out in ebook, and that's the ebook cover there. So, and I'm also the author of a memoir, which is called All I Could Bear: My Life in the Strip Clubs of Gay Washington, D.C. Um, <laughs> sort of tells the story about how I went from being a stripper, which I did to help pay for grad school, to becoming a writer. So. Um, and again, the cover is right there. And it was actually recently translated into German. And here's the German cover, which is a lot hotter, in my opinion. But anyway, um, and in addition to doing that, I also am a professor. I teach writing at Northern Illinois University. And I've also taught at the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. And I'm also a writing coach, where I work with many private clients about with, you know, to help them with their writing. So I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. And today, I'm going to kind of give you advice that I've used in the past for myself and for my clients and my students at times that they felt stuck in the writing process. And quite honestly, I think, you know, feeling stuck is just a part of the writing process. You know, if you're feeling stuck in what you're doing now, it's not you. It's just a part of the process. And I think this is true whether you're working on your first project or you're working on your 50th. You know, it's something that I've gone through every single time that I've um, been writing. You know, first I just want to stop really quickly and just make a little comment. Because sometimes I think when you're watching videos, you're always like, where is this person, you know, talking from? What is this room or anything like that? I'm in Miami for a few months, so I'm staying in kind of a temporary place. So all of this isn't necessarily my decor or anything like that. But, you know, I just wanted to um, go ahead and get this message out to you and stuff like that. So please don't judge the decor too harshly because it is not mine. Uh, so anyway, basically the method that I'm going to um, introduce to you today is, like I said, something that I've used in the past. It's also something that my students and my writing clients have used. But I developed it really first and foremost for me because, you know, there, there's always a time when I'm writing something, especially something very long, where I just feel stuck. You know, maybe I've got, gotten away from it for a little while and I just don't know how to get back to it. Um, maybe I know that it's something that I have to do and I can't really get up the energy to start on the project. So it's kind of like a four-step process that I've developed in order to um, help really kickstart the writing and get me back on track. So the four steps in the process are acceptance, clarity, honesty, and consistency. So it breaks down to like HC, no, I'm sorry, it breaks down to ACHC. So if you can remember that ACHC, if you can tell you that like 10 times. But anyway, that's a good way to remember it whenever you're feeling kind of stuck. So the, I'm going to go through each step. Now the first step is acceptance. Because throughout my career I found that I think um, feelings of guilt and shame are really really common for writers. I've experienced it, almost everybody else that I've worked with has experienced it. And what I mean by guilt is that I think there always comes a part in your writing where you feel guilty that you know, you haven't done more, that you're not further along than you, you know, wish you could be, and there's just a lot of guilt on that. Like I said, maybe you've spent a lot of time away from the project, and, you know, what kind of can stop you from getting back to it is you just feel so bad from being away from it. You know, you just have this guilt, and it's just something that kind of weighs on you all the time. And then I think there's feelings of shame that come in um, to play, and I know a lot of people don't like to talk about shame because it just feels, I don't know, shameful. <laughs> to talk about shame. But what I mean by shame is that I think we put ourselves out on the limb so much to call ourselves writers, right? Um, you know, generally, like, we're the only writer in the family or something like that. We don't really have a lot of people around that necessarily understand the process. And I feel like, you know, we can feel like a lot of shame that maybe we're not as successful as we think we should be and, like, people are judging us because of that. I think, um, you know, I think that can happen a lot of times at the beginning of your career where you're calling yourself a writer and people are like, okay, so what have you written? What have you published? And you can't really give them an answer. You can just say, oh, I'm working on something. And I think that that kind of feels a little bit shameful. 
Um, I think that also comes into play if you've been writing for a long time and maybe you've had some projects that weren't quite as successful as you wish they had been or maybe you know you're working on a book proposal and it didn't sell and all of this I think can um, can really provide a lot of shame and again all of those things really stop us from being as productive as we would like to be. So this is the first exercise that I have um, for sort of dealing with some of those feelings and you can find all of these exercises in the accompanying workbook and if I can figure out how to do it I'm gonna have a link like I don't know maybe like somewhere here or maybe along here or somewhere that's gonna have a link to the workbook but you don't, you don't necessarily need the workbook you don't really need it at all you can just do this on your own but I know for some people you know they like to work from a workbook so all these exercises are in the workbook so the first thing that I suggest you do is just write down all of the things that you wish had happened at this point in your writing career. You know, like, oh, I wish I had finished the book by now, I wish I had worked more, like, whatever you feel, whatever's kind of weighing you down, all of the things that you wish had happened at this point in your career. Oh, I wish I would have been a best New York Times bestseller by now. All of those things, just write all of those down. And I know at first that can seem like you're focusing on the negative, you know, but in my experience, I think what it is is that sometimes when we have these feelings, we are sort of quick to suppress them. You know, we don't want to think about them. But at the same time, the feelings that are associated with those things, they still stay with us, whether we're, we're suppressing them or not. So it's really important, I think, just to get all of the thoughts down in order so you know exactly what you're dealing with. So, you know, I'm not going to give you time in the video, obviously, because I don't want it to be like an hour-long video to write this stuff down, but that's the first step. Um, and then once you've written down the stuff, I want you to look over it really, really closely. Um, because the next thing that's really important is that you have to find some way to try to make peace with the fact that whatever's happened before is what's happened before. You can't go back and change that. And you just kind of have to find a way to forgive yourself for, you know, what you have or haven't done that's led to the current state of your career and start to move toward a place of acceptance. You, in order to produce, you really have to accept where you are in your writing career or where you are in this particular process in order to move forward. So the next step that I suggest, sort of the next exercise, um, is to write some sort of personal statement where, of forgiveness, okay? And you all are writers, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what to write. But the next exercise is to write something along the lines of, I accept where I am in my writing career, I forgive myself for not being further along, and I pledge to move forward from here. Like whatever it is that works for you, write some kind of statement like that. Now obviously I'm not trying to pretend that this is some kind of, you know, magic statement. It's not like Harry Potter where automatically you're going to say this and all of the feelings of guilt and shame that might have you know, slowed you in the past are just going to go away. But what I find that this, um, I find that the statement is effective because whenever you start to feel those bad feelings, you can kind of go back to the statement. Because the ultimate goal with, with acceptance is just to realize, to stop feeling like you're always behind. You know, because nobody wants to feel like they're always behind in the game. That's, and it's possible, that's like you're kind of, you know, running some race and you're like, completely behind, you know all these other people in front of you and you just really can't even see how you're ever going to finish. That's not a good place to be. You want to get to some point where you're just accepting where you are in your career. Like if this is your first book, be fine with this being your first book, even if you wish this was your 95th book. You know what I mean? If you haven't been as successful as you'd like to in the past, accept that, accept that you can't change that, you know, you can't go back and make those books have sold more than they did at the time, but the only step in moving forward is to accept that and to create something new. Because the truth is, for experienced writers, you know, um, one book, one successful book, can change the whole trajectory of your career. That can go back and breathe life into all of those other books that you might have written. But you'll never be able to do that until you write the next book. So the important part here is just to remind yourself that you're not at, you know, you're not like running behind in the race or anything like that. You want to try to get to a point where you're like, okay, you're only at the beginning. This is now your new starting point. So that's where acceptance comes in. I feel like you really have to make peace with where you are 
and not beat yourself up about it in order to begin to move forward. Now, the next step in this is clarity. Remember, <laughs> I can hardly get it myself, A, C, H, C. And maybe if I can figure it out, I'll have like graphics or something like that. No promises, though. But clarity is really important because I think as writers, we're ideas people, right? It's like we don't have an idea for just one book. We have an idea for like a thousand books, not to mention some anthologies, some magazine articles, maybe a screenplay or two, a TV series. You know, we have all of these ideas in our head. And the thing about it is that it's easy to feel like you're behind in the game because you're feeling like not only are you not making progress on this one book that you need to be focused on, you also aren't making progress on all of these other millions of ideas that you have. And again, I think that adds to a certain degree of guilt and a certain degree of heaviness that makes it really hard to move forward. So this is the next exercise. And again, you know, all of these are in the workbook. But for the next exercise, I want you to just take time to just write down every idea that's in your head that you would like to, you know, every writing idea that's in your head, things that you'd like to work on, like I said, screenplays, ideas, just whatever it is that is just kind of constantly going through your head as potential projects. I want you to write all of that stuff down, okay? Because this I find effective with people because a lot of times when we have different ideas for what we'd like to be doing in our writing, you know, these ideas that constantly kind of haunt you while you're trying to focus on one main thing, I think the reason why you can't quiet these voices, why they're just kind of, you know, work on me, work on me, work on me, work on me, why they're kind of going around is because a lot of times we never take the time to write the ideas down. So in a lot of ways, the ideas are kind of clamoring for your attention because you've never actually written them down and kind of giving them some sort of um, acknowledgement by writing them down. So I find it's really effective just to kind of write all of your ideas down. So again, I'm not going to stop at this point, but you know, do that. <laughs> Pause the video or whatever and um, do that. So after you've finished that process, I want you to take the list and I want you to go through and prioritize all of the ideas. You know, whether it's 10 ideas or whether it's 10,000 ideas, which honestly would take you a long time, but still it's an important part of the exercise. But go down the, there and prioritize. And if there's one main thing that you really need to be working on right now because of a deadline or something like that, put that one at number one, okay? And this is really effective, I find, because it helps you gain control of the ideas because it's like now you're not just swimming in a sea of ideas and you don't really know what, you know, when you're ever gonna get a chance to work on these things or anything like that. Now you actually have a plan because just feeling, having, writing is such a weird thing where, you know, we're kind of always in this insecure place of not knowing what's gonna come of a project or anything like that. So getting to the point where you are in control of the ideas, any, anytime you can get kind of control over anything, I think in the writing process and not just feel like you're drowning, I think that that's really um, effective. So go through and write all of those ideas. And um, you know, I, again, what I found, and I'm not just, you know, kind of just talking from no experience. This really has helped people. Because what, what I find is that once you've written those things down, you really do start to gain control in those moments of idea overload. So you might want to keep the list handy so that whenever you get another idea, you can just add it to the list and just give that a ranking number. And again, you're no longer just drowning in a sea of ideas. You actually have a plan for what you're going to work on, you know, and knowing that the first idea is the most important. Now, I do have... If, I know in some cases, maybe if you haven't started a project yet, you might not know exactly which project to start. And I talk about this a little bit more in the workbook. But what I would say, the point of all of this is to try to get you to complete something, okay? So let's say if you're torn between writing some sort of a memoir and like writing, you know, some kind of like oral history of, you know, the first Star Wars tr trilogy or something like that, go with the memoir, you know? If you're really serious about completing a book, you want to try to choose the idea that you can move forward with right away, with not out a lot of additional research, research or a lot of additional resources, but just something that you can do right now. That's really, really important. And like I said, I talk about that a little bit more in the workbook. 
So step three, um, I'm just doing that just in case. Like I said, I don't, I can't find a way to um, make graphics. My hand looks really weird when I do that. But anyway, uh, step three is honesty. So now that you've figured out what you want to focus on, it's time to start developing a plan for how you're going to actually complete this. And this is where you have to be really, really honest with yourself about like who you are as a person and like what your lifestyle is because you have to try to fit the writing in with that. If you can't find a way to fit the writing in with who you already are, you know, not like who you want to be or who you think you should be in order to be like, you know, a, a super productive writer, but just really who you are, then the plan is never going to work. You know, so I'll give you a perfect, because this is an example that I just get all the time. A lot of times that I talk to other writers and it's like they clunk, they kind of clump their writing goals in with all of their other self-improvement goals. It's like, okay, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to like, I don't know, start eating vegan. I want to like do all of this stuff and I want to write a book. That's just a sure path to failure. Just like most New Year's resolutions never work or anything like that. You know, the sad part about human nature is that a lot of things that we think we should be doing to better ourselves, we actually never get around to doing. So you want to remove the writing from all of that. It's, and you want to start being really, really honest about who you are and trying to figure out a way to work the writing in on that. Now I'll give you a perfect example from my own life. Okay, I'm a guy, like, I'm extremely lazy. Any of my friends and family will tell you that I'm very likely the laziest person that they know and I really don't even feel any shame about that, okay? And basically what I like to do, I like watching a lot of TV, and I like going out drinking, to going out to clubs and drinking. Okay, so when I was working on my memoir, I had to find a way to figure out how to write this memoir without really sacrificing too much of my TV time or too much of my drinking time. So what I basically did was um, I kind of went through, you know, the stuff that I normally do. And I figured out that most of the programs that I liked on TV um, ended kind of like around 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? So even though there's something that I might have watched at 10, it's like, you know, I could easily give those up. I wasn't that into them. So I basically wrote my memoir from like 10 o'clock to midnight. And I would just do that. Um, I did that for like four days a week. And I really didn't feel like I was giving up anything. And then because I was productive on those four days, I enabled myself to go out, I allowed myself to go out three days to go out drinking without writing at all. You know, and that was, and I completed the book that way. That was a way of me um, writing, but incorporating the writing into what I already do. I wasn't trying to say, oh, I really wish I didn't watch so much TV, so I'm going to cut down on watching TV, or oh, I think I go out and party too much, so I'm going to cut down on my partying. I mean, maybe I should do those things, but... I didn't make that a criteria for me. To, I didn't make that kind of necessary for me to do in order for me to continue writing. Because I think your best path for success is to try to learn how to write within the context of your life as is. So this exercise is I want you to go through, like make a schedule. Um, let's see. You know, this is really, there's something like, you probably can't see the grids, but basically this is in the workbook and it's just kind of like a weekly thing and then it breaks down um, the hours into half hour increments. And I want you to go through your entire week and try to find at least an hour without you sacrificing anything that you already do. Try to find at least an hour where you can spend focused on your writing. And they can, it can be, depending on how you write, it can be in 15 minute increments it can be in 30 minute increments or it can be an hour long blocks. To me, I'm a little bit scattered, so I really like to work at least in like an hour block because otherwise, you know, in 15 minutes, I can't really get around to the hard work of writing. But I find a lot of other people who are much more, who are just naturally more focused than I am, they really find that short blocks can be effective. So I want you to go through the schedule again and um, try to do that. Once again, I'm not gonna wait for you to do this. <laughs> But I'll just go on to tell you um, the kind of the point about that. You really can get a lot of, you can really make a lot of headway on a long-term writing project by working just an hour a week. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but try to just find an hour. Now, in keeping with honesty, 
what I would say, if you go through your entire schedule and, you know, just put everything down there, if you're like addicted to The Bachelor, if you're, you know, spend hours playing video games, like just put all of that stuff down there and the times that you normally do that. Now, if for some reason, you know, whatever moment in your life right now, you can't even find an hour each week to work on your writing, then you do have to be honest and just decide that maybe this isn't the right time for you to be working on a long-term writing project. And again, that's just honesty, that's just the truth. If you can't find an hour, it's probably not really a good time for you to be focused on that because what's gonna happen is you're just going to wind up being frustrated. But what I would say then, my advice is to give yourself an absolute deadline of when you're kind of gonna reevaluate your life. You know, maybe, to, you know, maybe your work gets a little bit easier at a certain point or maybe you try to slowly rearrange things so that you have more writing time. Give yourself a deadline, whether it's in a week a month, six months, or whatever, for you to get back to thinking about finding writing time. So again, what this deadline does, like with some of the other things, it just helps you feel more in control. You know, this way you feel like you're not just overwhelmed by life circumstances beyond your control, but you actually have a deadline for when you're going to get back to thinking about your writing. And this worked very well for me recently. Recently I moved to uh, Miami, which, like I said, hence the... Um, the weird kind of hotel room looking <laughs> temporary place that I'm in right now. And I mean, I knew that when I moved here that I was not going to have time to write in the whole trip. I think it took like 26 hours to drive here from Chicago. And I knew that once I got to Miami, I really was just going to want to spend time at the beach and going out. You know, I mean, I knew that's what I was going to do. So rather than sit around every day and just feel guilty that I wasn't writing, I gave myself a month off. I said, I'm gonna give myself a month where I'm not even gonna think about writing. And then in that, after that month, I'm going to look at the way my life is in Miami and kind of figure out some writing time um, from there. And that was actually very effective for me. I, was, I think I even started a few days earlier than the month and I was able to get back to the writing feeling refreshed without feeling like I had been letting myself down for the past month, you know? So again, just go through that schedule um, and try to figure out at least an hour block. Hopefully you can find more, but the bare minimum, try to find an hour, an either an hour block or like 15 or 30 minute increments where you can work on your writing. Now the last step is consistency. So this is where I have to get a little more hard line. <laughs> you know, I know that everything else I've been saying, it's been like, oh, just, you know, work with who you are and don't try to change anything and everything like that. But once you have found that hour block, you really have to stick to it. Because if you don't stick to it, you know, all of that other stuff that we started with, all of the guilt and everything like that, is just going to start again. And you're going to be right back at the beginning of the process. And the way I like to look at it, um, like I don't have kids, but um, I like to look at it like the book is a kid. You know, the book is a kid, and let's say your writing time is the time that you're supposed to pick the kid up from school. Like, you don't want to be that parent that abandons their kid at school. That's horrible. You know, child services comes in and just all sorts of horrible things can happen, Amber Alerts and what have you. You want to be there to pick up your kid. So you want to be there to constantly, to consistently work on your book. You know, like I tell people, there are no after-school programs for books. You know, if you don't go and pick up the book at the time you're supposed to pick up the book, then it's just out there and it's abandoned and you know, that's, like I said, a really, really bad thing. The other thing is, it's just important to, once you've made this goal, and you've made this goal based upon, like, all of your wildest indulgence, you know, you're not really giving up a thing, it's important to stick to it. The worst thing you want to do is disappoint yourself, because if you don't work on it, you're sort of sending yourself a message that that project isn't that important. So once you've honestly created a schedule, it's really important to show up and be consistent with that. And I just want to show you a little bit, well not show you, but tell you, well I guess I'm showing you if you're watching the video, but in any event, um, what you can accomplish really by consistently working for like an hour a week. Okay, because let's say in an hour, whether it's in the increments or in the hour block, let's say you can write four pages, okay, like four double spaced Microsoft Word pages. That's like 250 words a page, so four pages is you know, do the math, not that I was very good at it, but like a thousand pages. So that's like a thousand, a thousand pages, whoa, sorry, edit. 
Okay, like, that's like a thousand words, right? A thousand words a week. Now, if you produce a thousand words a week, in a year, you'll have 52,000 words. That is more than enough for a book-length manuscript. In fact, the contract for my memoir was at 50,000 words. And for like National, write, National Novel Writing Month or whatever it's called, I hope I got that right, the goal there is 50,000 words. So again, if you can just commit to a thousand words a week based upon the schedule, you really, in a year from now, you can have a book. And for some people, like a year might seem long. I actually don't think a year is long to create a quality project, but product, but everybody is so fast these days. People want to write a book in a weekend and stuff like that. You know, as a professional writer, I don't really think that you can write a quality book that you are going to be proud of and it's going to be a part of your legacy in a weekend. You know, I really do think that you have to commit a certain amount of time to it. But in a year, you'll have a book. If you had started this, or if I had made this video a year ago, at this point, you would have a book, you know. And that is the first step in moving forward with your writing career. So the final exercise, I really don't have much to tell you, is just once you have the schedule, is just to write. That's the key to, um, to moving forward with this. And like I said, I know I've kind of rushed through this, but I talk about it a lot more in the workbook, and this really has worked for myself several times and for a lot of other people. So I hope this was helpful to you. This is the first video I hope I'm going to be making. I plan to be making a lot more. Let me know what you think. Let me know what other writing questions that you might have. And really importantly, again, I'm going to try to embed a link somewhere on here, but maybe it'll just be in the descriptions. But join my mailing list, my Bat Coach Craig mailing list, because I'm going to respond to a lot of people's questions personally in the email mailing list, and you can ask me questions, and I'm going to give a lot of like exclusive content that I'm not necessarily going to put on YouTube or put on the website to people that subscribe to my mailing list. So be sure to do that. And again, I want to know what you think, and I want to know your other questions, and um, you know, just let me know. And as long as these, um, people have been asking me to do this for a long time, and I'm finally just getting around to doing it, but as long as people are interested to hearing my writing advice, I will keep doing this. And lastly, just in um, the interest of self-promotion, you know, you can always, if you're interested in finding more about my story, you can um, check out my memoir, which is available on Amazon, it's available on Audible, you can listen to it on Spotify, you can listen to it on SoundCloud. So, and I plan to talk a lot of, more about writing memoirs um, in the future. So again, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Welcome to Writing a Vote.